In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Antonio Joseph died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share in Jesus' victory and eternal glory. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully, grant that through this mystery, your servant, Antonio Joseph, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From all their distress, God rescues the just. From all, From all their, their distress, distress God, God rescues, rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. From, From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. From, From all, all their, their distress, God, God rescues the just. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me. In prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We began by uh, blessing the remains of Antonio Joseph. I find it hard to call him Antonio Joseph because most of the time I knew him as Tony. Well, not really. I always called him Mr. Bandoni. <laughs> he lived right across the street from our family. Their children and us, we grew up together same neighborhood, and whoever wrote the obituary, who wrote the obituary? Gina? Yeah. She got it right about the whistle. <laughs> she got that right. He was famous for his whistle. I had forgotten the piece about the fact that he reft uh, games, uh, basketball and football and other things, uh, of, of course they're assigned a whistle and they use it in the course of the game to stop the play or call a fall or whatever. But he didn't use one of these whistles like the game whistle when he went out in the evening to call Mike and Steve and Gina home for supper. He had this whistle that could be heard throughout the neighborhood. And from various places you would hear, Here I come! As the Bandoni children would rush home for supper and, I don't know, wash their hands or whatever and get ready to sit down and eat. That is what he is most famous for, at least in our family. But I think anybody who grew up in that neighborhood is like, oh yeah, Mr. Bandoni's whistle. Well, we're not here to talk so much about him, but to talk about Jesus, who called Antonio to himself 
in the waters of baptism. That's what we remembered at the very beginning when he got his Christian name, Antonio Joseph. When he died with Christ, when he was buried with Jesus, he shared in his death and burial. And just as Jesus rose from the dead, well, in the waters of baptism, Antonio Joseph also rose to newness of life. On that day, he was clothed in white. He was given, or his godparents received the candle, the light of Christ, symbolized by the Easter candle there at his side, to remind him you have been enlightened. You've been brought out of the darkness of death. You are a child of the light. Walk always as a child of the light. That is the beginning of our walk with Jesus. And that walk always is directed to one goal and one goal only. It's to union with God to walk in the way that Jesus shows us. For he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Well, the little bit that I knew, as much as you can learn from living across the street from a family for umpteen years, <laughs> and then afterwards, sharing the same parish. Uh, Mr. Bandoni walked in the way that Jesus showed him. I think he was raised in the Immaculate Conception Parish, I see, because we were St. Therese Parish. I never saw you at St. Therese Parish. <laughs> because I think you went to Mass at Immaculate. St. Mary people, you're like, you're St. Mary's for life. They're lifers. And so, he went, that's where he went. But the obituary also pointed out, and reminded me, of, how, of walking in the way of Christ, and that's why I read the gospel. The gospel, for those of you who are following and those of you online who are, who are looking through your missiles like, what gospel is he reading? That was yesterday's gospel for the Monday of the first week of Lent. But I used it specifically because, and purposefully because it showed what Tony learned from Jesus. He participated in the Lions Club. Well, that's a service organization. And one of the things that the Lions do is to help especially disadvantaged youth, taking them on uh, camping trips and that kind of thing. Another thing that he participated in was the Casa Angelica for children and young people and some who aren't so young anymore, but who have all kinds of physical and mental uh, disabilities. And he actively supported them. This is what the gospel told us. I was hungry, I was naked, I was thirsty, I was ill, I was in prison, I was a stranger. You took care of me. Not only did he take care of them, he also took care of his family. Now, we all have issues with our parents. Gina, Steve, Mike. 
I had Michael's funeral years ago. But he took care of you. You had a home. You always had clothes on your backs. You had shoes on your feet. You had education. He took care of you. So not only did he take care of other people's children, he took care of his family and their needs as well. These are the things that we honor. These are the things that God honors. That, as the gospel says, these, the ones who did not do it, these will go off to eternal punishment and the other ones will come into eternal life. Come and enter into the joy of your master. That's what we celebrate today. A life that was well lived, that was lived in union with Christ Jesus, that was one that was nourished by his faith in the sacramental life of the church. I went to prepare him for death shortly before he died to receive all the sacraments of the church. And now we come to the table, the Eucharist, to remember Certainly to remember Tony, Mr. Bandoni. But more importantly, to remember Jesus. And the promises that are made to us in baptism, promises that are strong, that death cannot undo. For Jesus has destroyed death through his resurrection from the grave. He sits at the Father's right hand and he intercedes for us. It is Jesus who whistled loud and strong. And Tony heard it that day. And by the surrender of his life, like Jesus on the cross, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Well, Tony didn't say those words. What he said was, here I come to enter into the banquet feast of God's holy ones, to be seated at the table with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophets, the apostles, the martyrs, St. Polycarp, whom we honor today, all the holy ones who have heard Jesus, who have followed him, who have listened to his teaching, his word, and put it into practice in their life. They are the ones who are seated at the table of everlasting life. May Mr. Bandoni be given the fullness of life and joy in the presence of our eternal Father. I invite you now to please stand. Let us offer our prayers. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Antonio, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, 
that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Antonio, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that he may be gathered together, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the deceased Ophelia Romero, may she rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen and love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Antonio Joseph, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Antonio Joseph, Tony, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now I invite you to bow and offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Please be seated. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Antonio Joseph, Tony, may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So for those of you who came for the funeral, I invite you to be seated. I'm going to give communion to those who did not come for the funeral, our regular mass attendees. And then I'll come back in and those wanting to receive communion will come forward to me here at the step. Keep your mask on. After you've taken the host, you go back to your pew and that's where you consume the host, okay? If you're, if you're receiving communion. All right, and then we'll do the final rites after that. All right. So. Gotta get back to work. 